What's up, Hope Power Ass Crew? Today's video is about this hunk of junk right here. My buddy Wayne and I just dragged in and getting caught up on rust bucket. I know I haven't done any kind of videos on it in a while and kind of explain why and probably talk to you about some um, upcoming projects we got going on. Cool? Cool. So, to start out with, I don't have a project name for it yet, so we'll just get you introduced to it the 97 Jeep Cherokee. Let's talk. There it is, 1997 Jeep Cherokee 4.0 automatic. And we're gonna cover that junk. We're gonna, I'm gonna, a few things that my dad and I were just going over a few things a few moments ago, just kind of like eyeball things and some things we found, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, 4.0, obviously. Radios laying back here behind me. I said radios because there's two of them. Uh, when I did the, um, what do you guys think about me dragging the Cherokee in video? Uh, but I, but I can't remember your name. You said something about a front clip that's up in Kentucky. I'm gonna check around here in Nashville If I can find the front clip I need I'll grab it here. If not, I'll be a road trip up in that neck of the woods So gonna need a windshield. So there's gonna be a windshield video coming up It's got the factory roof rack on it and it's got to be ding in it right there it Needs major cleaning somebody gouged up the door here Uh been throwing junk away. Uh, there's how I'm holding up the rear deck right now. Hmm. Got a couple of spares back there. Uh, this was full of junk. I've already trashed a lot of it. Pull up the shop back here in a minute to really get out the rat's nest that's up front. Well, we hand scooped and found two dead mice in it. So. So right over there is where we had the mouse, the mouse uh, nest and stuff. And yes, there was two dead mice all up in it. So if you should grab the shop back and man, get all that crap up, make it look halfway decent. Uh, overall, the seats are in excellent shape. It needs a headliner, bad. So there will be a headliner video coming up. No major tears in the seats, just nice and dirty. Uh, we got some little bit going on right there. And I have to pull this off, see if there's anything underneath all this. But so far, I haven't found anything dramatic. Most of the time, you got a lot of wear right through here, people getting in and out of it. You got a little bit of crinkle going on in the vinyl right there. But overall, the interior is in excellent shape other than need the major cleaning. And we got the rear window defogger and the squirter for the rear window, cruise control. And we hooked the battery on two few minutes because it's got 225,000 miles on it. Full power options here. Door cards are in good shape. Had to pull that door panel off right there because that window right there the track system was messed up in it. That window was down, and I had to get it up because we're about to get rain here in just a little bit. So I had to stick my pull that door panel off. Take my hand, stuck to push the window up. I got a pair of uh, vice grips inside there holding that window up at the moment. So I got to put a new track system in that right there. Mismatched tires, but I got a set of Cherokee aluminum wheels for it. Or I may end up putting the ones I've got on Rust Bucket right now, putting them on it. So I've got a different scenario going on with rust bucket, which I'll talk about that here in a minute. Got the hitch. It's got the cross right and a quarter rear end under it. This is not a Dana 44 rig because the Dana 44 is our early uh, XJs. This is a 97. So therefore, it's going to be the eight and a quarter. It has a Dana uh, 30 front. 231. I'm, I'm going to get my house right now. Otherwise, I'd give you guys a little bit better view. But it's got the MP231 transfer case. Now let's talk about what's going on underneath the hood that Dad and I have found already, just eyeballing things. So he's got the wiring here, positive cable, and you got the one coming off the fuse block here. And he gets some cable ends, put those together, the grounds. Because uh, we were trying to get that wind up over there and we kept hooking up here. And where to go, 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 where to go. Okay, that's the ground right there. Then we're hooking up the thread here. It wasn't doing anything. Dad realized, hey, Dad, look. Even the fuse block is unhooked. So once we hook that up, 
the power window motor worked, but it wouldn't roll up. So that track cable system inside there is all jacked up for some reason. So not knowing if the guy that worked on this before, if he has any clue what he's doing. First thing we do is we start checking our rockers. See, look how loose that is. Loose. They are not supposed to be that loose. Look right there. And those are they're about ready to fall off. So I need to go through there, torque down all the rockers in the proper sequence. I'm going to go over all the head bolts and stuff, check all that because I've got another cylinder head in the back of my 91, my Jeep, driver Jeep. The head, I'm assuming, came off of this because this had a head gasket laying up here on top of it, which I've already trashed. The head gasket looked good, but this is a new gasket. And you can see the edge of the head gasket right here, and it appears to be a new gasket. And back over in here where the head and the deck and the cylinder, wall, and the cylinder block meet, I kind of see remnants of where they cleaned the top of the cylinder block. So I'm assuming this is a different head that got pulled off of another engine somewhere, and they stuck it on. And the guy just decided not to not to finish the deal. Uh, power steering pump, because it needs it blows up right here, and probably a rat's nest outside this. This has been sitting in that garage for like three years. Uh, nothing over here. What are we gonna find? What are we gonna find? Good lord. Yep, you need a vacuum all up in that thing. And I saw the back of rust bucket there. There's a set of brake lines. Brand new set of stainless steel brake lines. The part number, Wayne ran the part number and found out that it goes to this Cherokee. So we got those as well. Uh, I kind of eyeballed the brake lines right there. They look a little crusty, but I don't see anything that says, hey, these things are dangerous. So... When it gets to that point, I start you know, redoing the brakes and stuff on it, then I'll figure it out from there if it needs them. If it does, I'll put them on. If they don't, eh, it is what it is. Uh, obviously, there's the fuel injection harness, and of course, it goes to the throttle body. And we got air conditioning. We'll find out when that works when the day comes. All right, so they put a new front end on it because they're all directed and they put this of course it don't match but they put another front end on guess what they're all directed again headlights been held in by a piece of wire so uh like i said a moment ago a buddy one that told me about uh in the comments about the one up kentucky if i can't find one here local the color matches i may head up that way so i get that one And so what you also want to look at is stuff like this right here. If you've got any kind of weird rust or paint flake coming from around a master cylinder, that can indicate that you've got a master cylinder leak between the master cylinder and the brake booster. And we've got the headliner back in the back. We've got the speaker pods in the rear light. Of course, like I said, it needs a headliner. I'm going to try to find, I'm going to go scavenge around for a center console. A lot of these Cherokees had an upper console right there. I'm going to get that too. Put that in this one. So what am I plans for it? What are my plans? Well, for one, we're going to do the front clip. Uh, but that's going to be secondary though. First thing I'm gonna do is figure out what's going on with the motor. I'm gonna do a compression check on it. Uh, of course, tighten out all my valves and all that stuff first. I'm gonna take uh, my torque wrench, go over all the head bolts, be sure they're torqued correctly. And pretty nice of leaving me the manual, so I guess I'll have the specs there. But go over all the torque specs, check all that out. Make sure he hasn't left anything, like you no, know, any kind of manifold bolts or anything like that that needs to be tightened up or he didn't put in at all because I did back here somewhere here couple of bolts right here that you see right there are the bolts where they go but are they below this above this whatever I got to figure all that out see what he's done then once I go over check all the torque specs get the uh, rocker arms torqued properly then we'll do compression check 
I'm going to do a uh, how to test a radiator video. So I've got two radiators. One of them looks pretty obvious that's got issues, and the other one is kind of questionable. Uh, then we're going to figure out how to pressurize the um, cooling system in the block and see if we got any internal leaks. That's broke. And there is your automatic transmission dipstick. Like I said, it's got the AW4 uh, overdrive transmission, MP231 transfer case, Dan 30 front, crash rate to quarter rear. Uh, let me get an exit and see what gear ratio it is. Okay, like I, like I said, this right here has the Dana 30 front, and I scratched it off right there, and I see there's a 5.5 five right there. Way up in there is a 3, but if you see the first two digits right here, right there is a 5.5, five, which means it's a 355 uh, axle. And it's got the bigger U joints. It does not have the CAD, the vacuum disconnect. This right here is a 97 model, so it's not going to have the vacuum disconnect. So... 355 overdrive there might be some little bit of potential for some decent mileage out of this rig as long as I don't put huge tires on it which brings me to another point what am I going to do as far as mods well of course we talked about the motor stuff as far as mods go uh, probably those 33s right there is going to end up on it for now I really prefer just have 31 10 50s on it to be honest with you but I'm going to use what I got for the moment here we go will those 33 fits that without a lift probably not uh, so lift I'm gonna probably do a junkyard lift on it uh, getting about three inches out of it cause I, uh, I've done some, a little bit of research you guys drop down the comments for those of you who know the combinations to get lift out of these uh, Z, uh, XJ's what I've discovered is ZJ front coils then do the junkyard lift kit for the rear get the extra pack out of a uh, GM pack and put an extra leaf in there you'll get about roughly two inches of lift out of that and of course doing the um, ZJ front coils and you can get an extra spacer puck to get that little bit extra out of it. So you guys, I am pretty versed on my YJs, the XJs uh, not as much. So if you guys know the tricks, drop them down in the comments. Say, hey, do this, do this, do this, and you get this much lift. I'd really appreciate the help. Uh, let's see. It's got the factory luggage rack on top of it, but I thought about doing the, uh, you know, the roof rack type setup. Uh, it's probably still will since we got this right here I can work off of. Uh, bumper wise, couldn't care less about that bumper right there because I'm probably going to do a steel setup, so kind of probably like a pre runner style front end. Uh, the grill and all that stuff, like I said, I need to find all that stuff. And I wanted to go back to factory green, so if I can't find what I need, well, I guess I'll be painting one. And so, three inches of lift. I'll probably be putting those 33s on it, but I really prefer 31s because it's going to be mostly a street light trail rig. Uh, of course, you got your roof rack. I think I'm doing up there. Back bumper, I'm going to do again. It's a kind of steel tube set up back here. Uh, one thing I found really cool and interesting is that I know you can get that little piece right here for you no know, make a pocket right here. But I am pretty daggone versed in fiberglass. So I think I'm going to do some kind of really cool custom sound system in this. Because you got your speaker pods up here and here. Put some cool speakers back up in here. Now, of course, i got the ones in the doors. And I've got room up there for a double DA in style uh, sound system. Plenty of room for amps. Now, am I going to make a rolling concert hall? No. I'm not. It, back in the day, when I had my low rider trucks and stuff like that. I had some wicked sound systems. Had a list here, had a camper shell on it, 415 inch, uh, uh, what were the, uh, high phonics, uh, subs and high phonics amps. Booming system. I mean, you can feel the asphalt shake. But I'm not into all that anymore. I do like good quality sound though. This is a great foundation to do just that. So that pocket right there, I could put a little, I could do a custom build for a sub box right there because, like I said, I'm pretty versed in the fiberglass. But I also thought about when my spare tire sits in here, I'm going to mount that spare tire there see what I can make happen. Um, if I can take this spare tire, because what it's supposed to mount is this right here, this surface of the wheel here is on the outside. Eh, okay, cool, it's all fine and dandy. If I could do some mods to make this side face this, I can make a custom uh, subwoofer enclosure 
that will recess back inside the wheel itself so the sub will be inside your spare tire and you still use that to store junk in or whatever or put your amp rack inside that or something so we'll cross that bridge when we get there um my first priority of course is getting this thing running and get it road worthy and that is like the third or fourth time i've hit my head on that thing Hold up my shovel and of course up here in the doors you've got your speakers in the doors over there uh like i said you got room for double din set up here and i think i mentioned about getting the full console uh full overhead console and you can see right there you got the od which means you got the overdrive transmission transfer case you got right there which means it's got the 231 transfer case and not the two, uh, 242 uh e-brake works real well and of course we got all that hmm pondering pondering of course the rear doors do not have speaker uh mounts inside them but it's not to say that you can't put them in so i might i might i might just show you guys how to do some kind of custom enclosure doing fiberglass tricks on that maybe this is how froggy i feel of course you got the ones back there yeah i may uh, i'm definitely gonna replace those we'll see about what kind of upgrades i do to that hmm so as you can see, somebody kind of hacked this up a little bit and the handle ain't there. So I had to reach way down south here to grab that handle to pull the door open or pull the latch to get the door open. Now, as far as lockers and stuff like that, I may go ahead and throw a locker in the front of it, just like a regular lunchbox locker. The rear, I haven't figured out if it's a uh, limited slip or is it a just open dip. I haven't fooled with it enough to figure that out yet. But I may look, go ahead and lock the front. Um, like I said, it's going to be a lightweight trail rig. I'm not going to beat on this in heavy. My... When I get this up to being a good, solid, dependable driver, and I got faith in it, but 91, I may take it, hit it for a little bit more for the trails. Of course, whenever one of these days I get rust bucket up and going and take a wheel it, I got a uh, for rust bucket. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about rust bucket. For rust bucket, uh, be right back. I'll show you something. Now, as I cruise on back here to show you this little cool item I got hold of, the reason I really haven't done much on rust buckets in the way of videos, it's really at a point right now that I've got nothing but welding to do at the moment. And so to, I've done so much welding videos and stuff like that on this particular rig right here that I just regurgitate a bunch of more. Look at me, I'm welding another piece of steel. I'm not gonna do that to you guys, it's just boring. Uh, there's a few things I need to put together whenever I do it. Um, like I'm looking at the stitch in the tub together and stuff like that. I'll make the videos on how to do sheet metal videos and stuff. I'm welding that. Uh, but the point right now, I'm still working on the frame, doing fab work on the frame. So really, there's no point in doing videos on it right now. I'm boring you guys to death with that. So the item I was going to show you. Looky, looky, looky. All right. Those of you who are savvy with your Jeeps, you know what that is. We got a Dana 300 transfer case. What's the big deal with that? Hmm. What's the big deal about Dana 300? What do you get when you take a cut up an MP231J Jeep and you buy the special adapter kits and stuff and tie it together with a Dana 300? What do you got? Double or set up. That's right. So the Dana 300 is a, is a passenger side drop. Now, one thing that's going under rust bucket, I've got a set of axles at my buddy Wayne's house that are um, out of my, three, my old uh, three quarter ton Chevy truck I used to have. It is a Dana 44 front, 8 lug Dana 44, and it's got a 14 bolt rear. Those are up there at my friend Wayne's house behind his barn, so I'm going to drag them to the house here, here soon, get them under rust bucket. And with the Dana 300 transfer case being a um, passenger side drop, so are the GM axles. So I'm going to keep the 4.0 liter in rust bucket for the moment, tie the, it's got a, um, Tour flight 999 in it, automatic uh, nine, uh, TF 999, to the MP 231J, cut it down to do the doubler setup to the Dana 300. Okay, so that little 4.0 with the GM axles, you know, they're not the rear is a ton axle, the front is actually a three quarter ton, so I can't call and say, Hey, I'm putting tons under rust bucket, I'm not gonna lie to him, I'm not gonna fake his stuff up. So the front's getting the heavy, it's a HD uh, Dana 44 that come out of a, it was a 79 model K20 Chevrolet truck that I used to beat the snot out of on the rocks and stuff back before, long before I got into YouTube. Uh, and so when I scrapped that truck out, I kept the transmission transfer case uh, in both front and rear axle. Well, 
throughout the years I traded the transmission transfer case off. The transfer case was an MP203. So I traded all that stuff off with transmission transfer case, but I still got my axles. And axles are going to end up under rust bucket. So there, there's that. So the front end currently looks like this. I boxed the frame coming over through here because this rig had a lot, a lot of frame rust in it. I shopped around for some frames a time or two, and the thing is, a lot of this metal I already had laying around from past projects and stuff. So, you know, I already had the metal, so I'm boxing the frame with the plate steel. And it's 3 16 A lot of your XJs, and that's one thing I may end up doing to this one right here, is doing the frame stiffener kit under the bottom of it. Because if you wheel these rigs right here, and I know we have rust bucket back to the XJ, but the XJ, if you wheel these rigs right here, they're a unibody. The frames are tied directly to the floorboard. And so if you wheel them a lot, the frames start cracking underneath them. So I'll probably end up doing the unibody uh, structure underneath this right here. Again, same thing as this right here. The YJ frame factory, if they're in good shape, you don't need to brace them. But like I said, this right here had so many bad spots in the frame. I couldn't find a frame that was actually worth getting that wasn't either one rusted out of pieces already or I could have bought another Jeep for the cost for the price of the frame. So there's that. So I'm still doing a lot of welding fabrication of that. The front end, I'm going to take those springs out and get another set of Jeep XJ because the back springs on the rust bucket are XJ springs. Got 11 inches of stretch, uh, total lift, uh, total stretch on the whole Jeep. Uh, but I'm going to swap out the XJ front leaves, get the U-Boat uh, Eliminator kit to go on the Dana 44 and both them up, but I'm going to get the 2-inch stretch, so I'll push the axle 2 inches this way. Plus with the XJ, I'm going to see how, much, how far I can push that axle this way because I've already got the uh, steering box hanging. And, I mean, I've got all my factory locations set up where I can put everything back together stock. But if I'm going to go and do the front stretch on it, then I can just go ahead and relocate my steering box. And I may end up going with the Astro kit. It just depends on where my front end ends up at before I decide what to do with the steering box. I've got a worn A274 going on the front of it. But the way I'm going to do that is once I get, I got to put me a brace so I can back up in here so far to tie the two front uh, frame horns together. This, I'm taking the center tube out, drop it down because I want to recess that worn down as low as I possibly can. So I'm going to end up taking a lot of this right here out, tying this into the frame back in there somewhere. But drop that down a little bit, take it worn, set it down low, and all that's going to be in plate steel, tying the front uh, frame section together instead of having that round tube. Uh, whenever I get to that part, I'll make a video on how I'm doing that. And again, you know, I've got all that plate steel I've got going out through there. I've got a little section back there. I don't have much more on the frame to do until I can start actually making videos again on rust bucket. I've currently got a blown up Dana 35 just holding up the back of it. Yes, I've got it mounted backwards. That's if you want to go back. If you want to go in reverse all the time, that's how you got to put your pinion. Yeah, yeah, right. And you see, look at the skid plate. It's like half missing. That's rust. Okay, so I've already got the uh, slip yoke eliminator kit put in this, which I did that video a long time ago. Uh, but again, I'm into pulling all that right back there, all that out. The MP231 and the slip yoke. Taking that MP231 using the reduction gearbox to make the crawl box for the Dana 30 for the Dana 300. Right there. Yeah, I've got all the dash pulled out of that, but I've made some videos on stuff on that too. Um, and she's just nasty. And work had me slaughtered for a while, so I've been some times I haven't had a chance to work on it. So that's where Rust Bucket's at, at the moment. Now, as I mentioned, the Jeep uh, rust bucket is going to stay 4.0 liter because of doing the doubler setup. It's keeping, it's going to put my drive shaft on the passenger side for those GM um, axles. That's going to work out well for me to get the same on the road faster. But what I really in game want to do is putting a, a small block Chevy in this. Now, will it be an LS? I have no idea. I've got a 354 bolt sitting on the sand that was from my old Chevy rock crawler. Uh, I may end up building that Chevy engine. I don't think I really need this change cams in it because it's got a solid lift cam in it and I don't want to run a solid lift cam so I need to change cams in it and check a few things like that and I've got an old school four bolt uh, Chevy Gen 1 small block that could be set up with this probably gonna do a 704 uh, r transmission having it built or I build it whatever and then probably a MP231C Chevrolet transfer case 
to mate to the J transfer to the Dana 300 transfer case. The end game for rust bucket will be a V8 power. But for right now, I'm going to leave that 4.0 in it, do the doubler setup. That's going to set me up for what I need to get the GM axles under the big heavy uh, eight lug three quarter ton axles. And by keeping the 4.0 liter in this, it's also going to set me up with another thing too. I've got a couple other blocks that's on the engine stands with complete 4.0s. I'll do the bracketry mock ups for those, but I've got a um, uh, uh, M98, is that right? Crap. One of those GM superchargers that comes out on the 3.8 liter V6s. I've got one of those in the garage, and I'm thinking seriously about making it to one of these 4.0s. I may build the bracketry on one of the spare blocks and transfer it over to Rust Bucket, do my diagnostic checks and stuff like that. Build it on Rust Bucket, and I may transfer it to my 91 after that because it's going to end up being a small block. Uh, move that supercharger to my 91, or do it to this, put the supercharger on this. I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. Or I can always go buy another supercharger and do it to this in the 91. I don't know. Now, let's talk about this rig. This is the star of the show, everybody, that they've got my YouTube thing started. If you guys watched last week's video, or last Sunday's release, or Saturday, late Saturday, I think is when I uh, released it. This is fixed to get onboard air. If you look at the bumper, which I made a video on a while back, right there, see the air fitting? This rear bumper is already set up for onboard air. It's an air tank. And as you can see right there, that's where the hose is going in right there. And how big is that tank? I have no idea. I had thought about it. Uh-oh. Owen was playing in my Jeep. I left the jacket, and there's the title to the XJ. Now, when I get the onboard air ready set up, of course, it'll be bolted on right here. But I already see a problem. It might be okay. I don't know. My plug boot right there is kind of fat. It's going to be off against that compressor. So I may have to keep me one of these angled plugs and go in right there kind of like it yes um, I've got this pulley right here which is riding on the belt here um, because the belt's gonna come off here come up around the compressor here and come down and around right there so I don't have a fan shroud but it has a need one so no big deal uh, some of the videos I still need to do on this right here there's still the video on how to do the uh, camshaft position sensor which is inside your distributor I still need to do that video. Uh, it's actually a trick. They say you cannot adjust the timing on these Jeeps. Technically, you can, but you got to do a little bit of a mod. The um, crankshaft position sensor, which is back there. Let's see if I can get myself to show you. Let's see. I'll use my viewfinder on my camera so I can see it. Do, 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 do. I see this ground. Uh, okay, that's it. Anyway, it's on top of the bell housing back here, your crankshaft position sensor. That is what tells you that uh, the box, which is located there, your ECM, where the timing is. You can do a slot trick to where you can cut a slot in the camshaft position sensor and move it back and forth, which you, you can actually set your initial timing that way. That is a trick I've been meaning to do. This uh, fellow back a long time ago show, told me the trick. And buddy, I, if you're still watching my channel, I apologize. I haven't shown that to everybody, but that's coming up soon as well. And back to the onboard air. Of course, my manifolds and my air manifolds are going to sit right along in here. So, place a bunch of fabric up some brackets. But when we get to that video, you'll be seeing all that. So. Yep. Of course, I'm still running the, still running those LEDs. They work pretty good. To show you how much I wheel, hmm, I mounted that winch like years ago, and I ain't even put in the electricals to it. T shows you I work all the time, still play. Uh, one thing I haven't showed you guys yet, when I put this front end, all the new ball joints and all that stuff in, on how to do a front end alignment. That's one video I still need to do for you. Check out my cool sticker. See so if you take your phone and scan that little sticker right there, it goes, whoop, pops me up to Power Addicts. And there's my website, fishjeeps.com. That's where all my Jeep stuff lands. And I'm playing with another sticker. Yay! Also, I'm thinking about changing tops. Uh, I like that top right there, I like it a lot. But I kind of want a full top again, and I think about trying the uh, Rampage frameless top now. Since I'm running a family style bar, not the sport bar. This is a 91 model rig. 
factory had the sport bar the drop down angle i put the family style on it so i could run the uh, frameless top so they may give me a frameless top here soon and probably gonna put me some rock sliders on it soon got a guy supposed to be checking on the set he's supposed to get back with me how much he wants for him but ain't heard that from him yet still got to put my other flat fender on the other side but it's kind of dorky stack factory fender on one side and flatten on the other but i gotta have time for that over there because i want to cut the video on that one for this right here i did it off camera and that's out of where i'm gonna do the video showing you guys how to cut your fenders and stuff cool cool so like i said no real instructional stuff going on in this video this is more of a introducing the uh, xj and some project ideas i have going on catching you guys up on rust bucket so the other thing I've told you in this video, if you guys got any cool ideas or suggestions or whatever, drop them down in the comments. I got this. I'm getting dirty. Oh well. So if you guys any kind of cool suggestions, comments, whatever, that'd be a cool idea that I can wrap up into these projects I'm working on, drop them down in the comments. So everyone, if you enjoyed these videos and enjoyed my channel, be sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't now. Leave me some cool comments and I appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later y'all.